Has the mystery of the monolith in Utah been solved? Like many influencers, Utah's vanishing monolith might have just relocated to New York City. As mysteriously as it appeared, the Internet's favorite metal monolith has vanished from its location in remote Utah. It's gone, announced the Department of Public Safety in an Instagram post. But is it? According to some theories, the monolith might not have vanished, but rather made like a true influencer and relocated from its remote Utah location to New York City, specifically to David Zwerner's Chelsea Gallery, which currently houses an apparent identical sculpture by the late John McCracken. At first, it sounded like a plot twist from a science fiction novel by Philip K. Dick, a tall, silvery slice of metal about 10 to 12 feet high with an aura of strangeness about it, is spotted in the Red Rock Canyons of the Utah desert. State employees who found it while surveying the land for bighorn sheep say they have no idea who drove the slab of metal into the rock floor. And in the days since, the riddle of what it is and how it got there has proven irresistible. Some wondered if it was planted there by aliens. Others thought it might be a tribute to the monolith in 2001 A Space Odyssey. But the most tantalizing speculation was that it might be the work of John McCracken, a minimalist sculptor with an affinity for science fiction, who died in 2011. The David Zwerner Gallery, which has exhibited the artist's work since 1997 and represents his estate, has asserted that the mystery monolith is a bona fide McCracken. Just one problem. If that indeed is the case, McCracken pulled it off without ever mentioning a word to his dealer or his friends as far as we know. Now, most everyone in the art world is divided over whether the story is plausible or a larksome prank. The son of the artist, Patrick McCracken, remains completely puzzled by the monolith. But when he heard the news, he thought back to an evening in May 2002, when his father was living in New Mexico in a small adobe house overlooking a mesa. We were standing outside looking at the stars, and he said something to the effect, of that he would like to leave his artwork in remote places to be discovered later. He recalled in a phone interview, he was asked if he thought his father was joking. He said, no, I actually thought it was something he might do. He said, he was inspired by the idea of alien visitors leaving objects that resembled his work, or that his work resembled. The discovery of a monolith piece that's very much in line with his artistic vision. A photographer who lives in San Francisco, the younger McCracken added, he wasn't your average sort of dad. He believed in advanced alien races that were able to visit Earth. To his mind, these aliens had been visiting Earth for a very long time, and they were not malevolent. They wanted to help humanity to get past this time of our evolution, where all we do is fight each other. John McCracken, who was born in Berkeley, California, the son of a rancher, was a memorable character. A tall, rangy man with weathered features and eyes that appeared to have stared too long at the sun. His interests were decidedly galactic. An avid reader of science fiction, he believed in time travel and extraterrestrial life. He was a friend of the actor Leonard Nimoy, the pointy-eared hero of Star Trek, and a collector of McCracken's work. McCracken, who died of a brain tumor at age 76, is known best for his glossy resin-covered planks of geometric sculptures that imbue the products of the humble lumber yard with the hard surface sheen of California car culture. His otherworldly passions are hardly a guarantee of the authorship of the sculpture, and it is possible the piece was created by a non-sculptor. You can narrow the pool of candidates to, at the very least, the millions of viewers enamored of 2001 A Space Odyssey, Stanley Kubrick's 1968 classic. The film, of course, features its own heroic monolith, a gleaming black structure that spawns evolutionary leaps. When apes encounter it and see their first straight lines and right angles, they begin using tools and undergo a transformation into intelligent beings. Who is known for his text-inscribed paintings and is probably the dean of the California art scene, befriended McCracken during the years when he was living in Los Angeles. I don't think that's a John McCracken, he said of the sculpture. It's unlike him to be a trickster of someone. A monolith in the desert? It's so universal that it could be anybody. It's very sci-fi to come across something like that. I like the idea of someone's having fun. Artist James Hayward, a close friend of McCracken and former assistant of his, agrees. 
It's a giant hoax, as far as I'm concerned, Hayward said. The object in the photos I have seen is crudely made. I looked at the corners as much as I could. They are made by a machine called a brake, which bends metal. When you bend metal with a machine, the corners are not sharp and crisp. They're rounded. Yeah, compared to a classic minimalist like Donald Judd, McCracken was an anomaly, in part because he resisted machines and industrial fabrication. He preferred to make his sculptures by hand, in a spirit of patient, painstaking craftsmanship. Truth be told, the piece in Utah differs from the planks he pioneered in 1966 and continued to think about until the end of his life. They consist of rectangular boards of plywood covered in fiberglass, painted a single color and leaned against a wall, as if workmen had rested them while assembling, say, a platform bed. Done in a range of strong, saturated colors, including bubblegum pink, sunflower yellow, and piano key black, they lend color and independent material life. But the high polish of their surfaces makes them so reflective, they appear to dissolve in front of your eyes into something that feels less like sculptural mass than pure platonic metaphor. McCracken liked to say that the planks inhabited a zone between painting and sculpture, with one end resting on the floor and the other touching the wall. A plank connects the earth beneath our feet with the higher realm of the wall, the surface on which painting and thus illusion first began. It must be noted, however, that many online armchair detectives, using Google Earth to determine when the sculpture materialized in the desert, are still asserting that it was placed there around 2016 well after McCracken's death.